Lem 3 would fly one last time, but this time she would fly alone. Okay, the tunnel's closed out, the pyros are armed. We're all set. So long, spider. Hope I didn't leave anything in there. Yeah. When I first saw the limb, I thought, you gotta be kidding. What kind of grows on you? It really is a beautiful machine. Listen to me, it's only Tom Kelly. <laughs> You guys are right. It's a lot for one mission. Maybe too much. If we get even half of it done, we can call it a success. I can't wait. Apollo 9 had shown that a limb could fly, at least in Earth orbit. Two months later, on Apollo 10, Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan took Lem 4 down to within 50,000 feet of the lunar surface. Look at that. There's enough boulders down there to fill up Galveston Bay. Houston, we is going, and we is down among them, Charlie. Now only one question about the Lem remains. The biggest question of all. And it will be up to the next Lem to answer it. When I said goodbye to Lem 3, I felt like a proud parent watching a child go off to college. As I say goodbye to this Lem, I feel like a parent of centuries past saying farewell as his child embarks for the new world. To some people, that might sound like I'm stretching the point. A Lem is not a child, it's a machine, and a machine doesn't have a soul. We may yell at our toasters and give names to our cars, but in the end, even a limb is just a collection of wires and circuits and nuts and bolts. I don't know. I think each limb does have a soul. It's the soul of all the people who built her, designed her, first dreamed of her. What number is this one? This one is limb five. Thank you for inviting us here today. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Hollow. Thought you guys, you might not be anybody here today. Someone would have thought of it. Maybe. And this is the actual machine that's gonna land on the moon. Yep. What are they calling this one? This one? This one is the Eagle. <laughs>